So one question I get frequently is, what is Azure for operators? And so, as you know, Microsoft traditionally had a great relationship with the carrier community already in terms of we've supported their back office uh, and the digital transformation of the back office. But as you know, a lot of the complexity of the back office is driven by the underlying network. So it naturally led to a conversation with the, with the operating community. Similarly, we had a great partnership on the, network, on, the, on the product side of the house in terms of, you know, initially it was the resale of Teams or the resale of Azure itself or, or, my, or Office 365. But you've seen a series of announcements with carriers like, Verizon and AT&T and, and Telstra and others, uh, Deutsche Telekom. Uh, we've been working closely on the IoT side, right? It makes a lot of sense, the connected device going to the cloud-based service uh, for us to work closely together. And that naturally led to a conversation with, with, with the network team. So really Azure for Operators is a network-driven uh, motion combined with sort of the, the, the adoption of SDN and NFE technologies and cloud-friendly technologies like the service-based architecture and 5G have sort of led to a second or trying to say, hey, can we solve for the cost and complexity of delivering network services in the cloud the same way we've done for the enterprise? And our customers are pulled us in this direction out of the conversation. So Azure for Operators is really Microsoft's uh, capability set and portfolio to, cap to, to help operators with their network workloads to adopt technology in the network workloads. Now, um, so we've had to make some important changes, right? To build a carrier-grade cloud. One, you had to change the definition of what cloud was, right? Obviously not everything in a network can go into central public cloud. Some of it can, and we're working with many of our largest customers to do that. Things like the control plane for 5G, things like uh, mobile voicemail, messaging, a lot of the stuff that's late, relatively latency tolerant. However, you also have to change the definition of cloud itself. In other words, you have to have a cloud presence to meet you where you need it to be, whether it's at the edge of the network, at the edge of the enterprise. So you've seen the launch of Azure um, private edge zones and Azure edge zones with operators, which is where we can take the cloud and move it to where it's needed at the edge of the enterprise or move it to where it's needed at the edge of the network, and then run both operator workloads and customer workloads at the edge. Um, giving people the ability to be, the maximum flexibility, you know, and then we see a lot of value in having a common platform for orchestration, lifecycle management, for, for security and for DevOps that run across all of that to make it easier to integrate a broad portfolio of, of capabilities across those areas in a way that you need to be flexible and responsive. You know, 5G and uh, SDN are going to lead to a whole explosion of intelligence out of the network and the ability to deliver apps out of the network. Um, so your ability to automate uh, at scale, going from millions of users to billions of devices, uh, is going to take a new set of skills and capabilities, which I think a lot of the operators recognize. We want to give them the technology to make that happen. So it still remains your customer, your product, just you know, powered by Microsoft technology where it's relevant. We also, you know, a big believer in the broad ecosystem. In other words, it won't just be Microsoft. We may have purchased MetaSwitch and affirmed, and that brings in hundreds of engineers that give us telco DNA, uh, but it helps us build the, whole, the strength of the whole platform. So Azure itself, really defining what carrier-grade Azure means, using our own engineering on R&D, not relying on the operator to pay for our R&D, essentially is a big chunk of this strategy. And so and if you want to use those assets, which we think are world-class, great. If you want to continue with your existing relationships with current NEP partners that you use, we think that's awesome as well, and we're working very closely with them. So it's all about building an ecosystem that's open and interoperable and, and, and leverages the best um, uh, capabilities that cloud has to offer to, you know, take down the expense of running a network, to scale up your ability to, to generate revenue, whether it's through network slicing, IoT, um, just connected application experiences, the next generation of content forms, whether that's mixed reality, AR, VR. And then that, and then and obviously you're going to future-proof your network that way so that every, you know, get a, break the tyranny of the G cycle where you're th these massive one-time investments that, that have to be done and where you can deliver incremental value over time as capabilities evolve. So it's all very exciting and we're, we're looking forward to working closely with our operator partners to, to, to learn and, and build out this next generation of the industry together. Thank you.